In this video, we'll be using what we know about coordinate proof and right triangles in order to prove that triangles are right triangles in the coordinate plane. Remember that when you're working in the coordinate plane, some helpful formulas include the distance formula, the slope formula, and the midpoint formula. And it might be worth our while to take a minute at this point and just remember what each of those these formulas helps us find. The first one, the distance formula, really helps us find the length of a particular line segment. The slope formula helps us find, I'm going to call, or what I'm going to call, slant. And the midpoint formula helps us locate where the middle of a particular line segment is. Just as when we wrote coordinate proofs before, the steps in this case are going to be exactly the same. We're going to draw and label a graph so that we have a visual reference for what we're looking at. Anytime we're going to use a formula, we're going to write the formula down on the paper. Of course, we're going to show all of our work. And then lastly, make sure that we have a concluding sentence that states what we've proven and why what we've proven has to be true. In the first and only example for this video, they're giving us a triangle with the given coordinates, and they're asking us to prove that this triangle is an isosceles right triangle. Remember from our discussion of coordinate proof in the past that the way that we show a triangle is isosceles is to show it has two sides of the same length. So in other words, use the distance formula. In order to show that this triangle is a right triangle, we're going to show that the length of its sides satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. In any case, all the way around, the formula that we're going to be working with is going to be distance. The first thing that I'm going to do, however, is go ahead and plot the triangle so that we have a picture of what it is that we're looking at. So there's vertex A. There's vertex B. And there's vertex C. And again, the formula that we want to look at and work from in this go round is distance. So the first thing I'm going to do, of course, is to write that formula down on my paper. And I want to find the lengths or the distances of all three sides. So the first side I'm going to find the distance for is AB. And you may find it helpful to take these coordinates and write them down below where you're doing distance formula. And that way, when you plug them into the formula, the coordinates that you're working with are right there where you need them. Remember that when you plug distance formula into the calculator, you're going to go ahead and you're going to start right with the open parentheses. So that's the square root of 50. Which then becomes the square root of 25 times the square root of 2. And the square root of 25 is 5. So 5 square root of 2. The next side length I'm going to find is side BC. And again, if you find it helpful, write the coordinates of the points that you're working with right here in your work. Might make it just a little bit easier to plug these fellows into the distance formula. And again, when I substitute into to the calculator, I'm going to start with those open parentheses. So 5 subtract 1. We want to take that quantity and square it.
So this is the square root of 25, which is really just a snazzy name for 5. So now we know the length of AB is 5 root 2. If you'd like, feel free to label these in your picture. We know the length of BC is 5. And the third side that we want to find now is side AC. And again, if you find it helpful, go ahead and write the coordinates down so that you don't have to keep going back to that point on the paper where the coordinates are. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and plug these points now into the distance formula. And once again, I end up with square root of 25, which is really just another name for 5. All right, so now I've got all these fancy pants calculations. I need to go ahead and say what these guys or what these computations prove. The fact that two of these guys are the same makes the triangle isosceles. So if I want to, I can go ahead and write one of my concluding sentences right now. Triangle ABC is isosceles since it has two sides that are the same length. And then to prove that it's a right triangle, I need to show that the lengths of its sides satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. So the length of its sides, we decided, were 5, 5, and 5 square roots of 2. And out of those three, when I go to plug into the Pythagorean theorem, I need to decide which one is the longest so that I know which one to use for my hypotenuse. So I'm going to grab my calculator real quick. And you might already know that 5 root 2 is going to be the longest side. But if you didn't... You could plug that right into your calculator, and you can see that 5 times the square root of 2 is a little bit more than 7. So that's going to make 5 square roots of 2 the longest side of your triangle. And that, therefore, is what we want to use for our hypotenuse. So we want to know if our a squared plus our b squared, in other words, our 5 squared plus our 5 squared, or 25 plus 25, that's 50. Our c squared is going to be 5 square roots of 2 squared. And remember, when you plug this into the calculator, it's really important that you make sure that you use the parentheses so that you're squaring the entire expression 5 square roots of 2. So 5 square roots of 2, that squared ends up being 50. So in other words, a squared plus b squared does equal c squared. So triangle ABC is a right triangle because its side lengths satisfy the Pythagorean theorem. Or you could say because a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so now we've used our, used our computations to show two things. We showed that the triangle is isosceles, and we also showed that the triangle is right. As always, I want you to take a few minutes and reflect upon what you've seen and learned, summarize the key ideas and the important understandings, and then see if you can apply what you've learned to solve the question on the next page.